Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is Tomahawk Pork Loin. Today we're gonna be cooking up a nice big Tomahawk Pork Loin on the Kamado Joe 3. So let's kick things off by firing up the grill. All right, this is the new Kamado Joe Classic 3. We've been cooking on it for the past month or so. We have them in stock now. Go over to ATBBQ.com and check it out. We're shipping them out. But this has been a lot of fun to cook on. I've been cooking on it with Eric Gephardt of Kamado Joe. Um, and they've been really fantastic. I, it's my favorite of the, the ceramic grills to be cooking on. Today we're gonna get it set up for smoking. So come check out the new configuration. All right, so we're gonna start by taking the grates out here. We set them on the side. You guys check these out, brand new metal shelves. Those are really cool too. And then this is the new cooking chamber. So this sort of hyperbolic chamber that creates a really cool airflow. But you take this top plate off. This is set up just for the smoking process. You've got a ring to hold that in place. Divide and conquer system. And then we can come right down here and the new charcoal basket, which we're gonna get set up for smoking. We'll probably only use about half this today since we're gonna be smoking initially. Now we're cooking with the Kamado Joe big block charcoal today. Stoked that we have this in stock now as well. These huge pieces of lump charcoal are great for smoking. Look at the size of those chunks. So we'll just fill up this half about to the top of where that divider is. That should be plenty. Nestle a couple of fire starters in here. Get those lit. So I'm just gonna leave the grill open while we get that charcoal fire going. In the meantime, let's go check out that tomahawk loin. So check this out. This is our 11 bone section of the pork loin, the tomahawk style. So it's got all of the ribs coming out from the pork loin down here. Really great presentation. This you could actually slice into individual chops. You've probably seen those cowboy ribeye steaks, uh, the beef ones around. This is the same kind of idea, but with the pork loin. Now what we're gonna do today is we're gonna cook this thing whole. It's a fantastic presentation. If you're doing a big party, Fourth of July is coming up. This would be perfect for Independence Day barbecue. At the very end, we're gonna slice off the chops and sear them on the griddle top on the Kamado Joe. Now this piece of meat came to us from Cheshire Farms. Shout out to those guys. Be sure to check them out. I'll put a link in the video description down below and you can pick up one of these for yourself. Now those guys do a great job of cleaning these things up so there's not much trimming to do. I've got a wild flap here. I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of that. If we check out the other side, you can kind of see what they've done butchery wise. So we've got all the bones here, but you can see they re they've removed the chine bone. So you can slice straight through these things, which is awesome. I'm gonna go ahead and try to get this membrane off the backside, but otherwise this thing's cleaned up and ready to go. You grab a paper towel, that's kind of the easiest way to grip the membrane on these. Because they are slippery. Once you get that end release, just go ahead and pull back. Ooh, if you're lucky, it all comes off in one swipe. And this one little spot right there. But otherwise, that's good to go. Now let's talk a little bit about seasoning because there's a lot of different ways you could go with this. You could go down a savory path. You could go down strictly sweet. Maybe you want it Asian style. There's a lot of different choices. Today, what we're going for is a simple American barbecue flavor profile. So that's going to involve some salt, a little bit of sweetness, there'll probably be a little bit of chili flavor in there as well. So we're gonna combine some of our favorite barbecue rubs to season this up. Now, another thing you could do is go ahead and brine this or even inject it if you like, but there's a lot of great fat in this piece. There's a lot of great moisture content. I'm not gonna worry about that today. If that's something you wanna do to add some extra flavor, go right ahead. Today, we're just gonna hit it with the rubs. We're gonna start with a little uh, jalapeno honey mustard for binder. It's gonna help the rubs stick to the meat. It also has some sugar in it, and that sweetness can potentially help create some caramelization on the outside, which is what we're going for as well. Now this is a pretty thin layer, so you don't have to worry about over caramelization or anything like that. We're really just trying to get the rub to stick at this point. And I have a feeling that we're gonna see this honey mustard again later in the cook. So the two rubs I've chosen for today are the Plowboy's Yardbird Rub, great salt content. It's got a few savory elements like celery seed and onion in it as well, but a great red color. 
And then I've also got the honey chipotle from Our Butts Are Smokin'. So a little bit of sweetness there, as well as that chipotle chili flavor. So that kind of checks all the boxes for us, right? It's got salty, it's got sweet, it's got just a touch of spiciness and great color. All right, so let's give that just a minute to kind of tack up on the surface before we flip this over and season the other side. A little bit more of our honey mustard. Now we're mostly concerned with getting the big chunk of meat seasoned, right? But up here on the bones, there's just a touch of meat in between each one of these, so we might as well go ahead and get seasoning all the way around. Also, visually, it's kind of a little bit more uniform. So coming in once again with the honey chipotle. A little bit of sweet and a little bit of chili flavor. And then on top of that, the plowboys. It's got that touch more red to it. The paprika and a slightly higher salt content. All right, coal bed's looking really nice now, so we're gonna get some chunks of wood on here. We're smoking with cherry wood today. Get those nestled right in there. A couple good sized chunks, that should put off plenty of smoke. We're gonna let those ignite before we put this thing back together. Got ignition, so we're gonna put this thing back together. Divide and conquer. Set our ring in place and the plate on top. So we have an indirect setup now. Get those grates back in place. And let's adjust the airflow. So just a small opening. We're gonna shoot for about 250 degrees here. We'll close down that bottom baffle and then watch the temperature stabilize. All right, we got our grill stabilized. Our rub sat up nicely on there looking wet and dark red all over the surface. So we're moving this onto the grill now. Just dead center. Uh, the airflow is really even, so it's not super important, but we do happen to have the meat over the hot side of the grill. Of course, we have the bones that are kind of protecting right down the middle. Uh, this is gonna be a perfect setup for smoking though. Our loin's been cooking for just over an hour and a half now, and the internal temperature is past that 130 mark. We're at about 135 on average. So this is where we're gonna pull this off. We wanna finish our pork in the 145 range. So we're gonna pull this off just a little bit early. There'll be a little bit of carryover cooking. In the meantime, we're gonna take apart the grill and set it up to get a nice sear on our individual pork chops. As you can see, we've got just some beautiful color from all that smoke it's taken on. And the aroma is incredible as well. All right, so we're gonna take our shelves off and take this apart once again. Divide and conquer, as well as this bottom ring. You know our charcoal's kind of died down a bit, so we're gonna throw some more charcoal in here to keep this fire going nice and strong. All right, so we'll kind of fill that back up. All right, so we'll throw the divide and conquer back in there. I'm gonna line these up. Get our cast iron griddle in place as well. And we want to open everything wide open so we can get lots of heat on that charcoal. So our loin's just come off the grill. It's really hot right now. What we're gonna do is glaze it up with some more of that honey mustard so it can kind of tack up while it rests. Now that loin's gonna come up to temperature, no problem. It's pretty much done right now. But we do wanna get a little bit of sear to add some texture and some flavor on those individual chops. So after it rests for just five, 10 minutes, we're gonna slice those chops out and hit them right there on the griddle real quick. This beautiful color on the loin right now. Probably go over this a couple of times here, just give it a thin layer. 
So this is just gonna add a little bit of extra sweetness and tanginess to the outside. And remember, after we slice this, this is actually going to be just around the edges of your chop. So you're just gonna get, as you take a bite out of that edge, you're just gonna get a little bit of that bark and a little bit of that tangy sweetness and then a nice, tender, juicy center. All right, now we just sit back and wait, let it tack up on the surface and get ready to finish with our sear. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and divide these off of here. Cutting right in between those first bones. Man, look at how juicy that is, that's awesome. Let's not waste it. So easy to cut with that chine bone removed. And look at that. That's a good looking pork chop. Now you guys know that you could stop right here, right now, and that would be a great piece of meat to eat. But you probably also know that sometimes I don't like to stop. We gotta go a little bit further. And that's why we're gonna put a little bit of sear just to add some extra texture on the outside of this thing. So it was a pretty quick 15 minutes. The cast iron's super hot. The grill's up to 600 degrees now. This is gonna be perfect for searing off these chops. All right, just gonna hit it with just a little bit more yard bird here. Throw it down on the oiled grate. There you go, just a minute. That's all it took to get a nice sear on there. Just another minute sear on the other side, beautiful. So all we're doing is creating some texture, right? A little bit of extra texture, a little bit of extra seasoning. So we got a great crunch going on the outside of our pork chops now, but you can see it was so fast. Look at all that juice that's just still pooling right there in the center. We've added a lot of flavor and texture without sacrificing any of that juice. Let's go ahead and have a taste. Mm. That's pure barbecue flavor. Fantastic. That's a fantastic way to do a pork loin. And the presentation is unmatched. I love these tomahawk chops. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all of the products featured in today's video. If you enjoyed the recipe, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments, or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below, and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made. Check this out. You know what else is great? I take that chop off there. You still got ribs on the side. That's like candy. Fourth of July is coming. This is what you should be cooking. If you cook it, I'll come over and hang out. And we eat ribs together. We'll be friends forever.